Richard Bruce here, and so here in uh, Psalm 76 is an interesting mystery concerning the two names. We have um, we have Judah and Israel, and then we have Jacob and um, Israel. So we have uh, Judah and Israel, and and uh, Jacob and Israel. And uh, let me uh, point out um, the scripture where you see that. Okay, it says, um, in Judah is God known. His name is great in Israel. See, so um, right there you have two things. In Judah is God known, and his name is great in Israel. Uh, why would it say, why would you have um, Judah as being where God is known, and then his name is great in Israel. What's the difference there? What's what's your thinking about it? And then you'll see it goes on to say that um, in Salem also is his tabernacle. And by the way, if you look at Salem, uh, that's the second part of the word Jerusalem, Jeru, Salem. So I think that might be a, a clue um, because it also says that he will again choose um, Jerusalem. And that's the dwell and we know from all the scripture that it is the um, that is the place where um, God Himself, when He dwells among men, shall dwell. Salem also is His tabernacle. Tabernacle, um, actually, that doesn't specifically mean, even though I I was I, I do I do believe it still means dwelling place, but it, it really means His. It's more than that. It's like a it's like a a holy covenant place uh, or a cer place of ceremony. But I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure about that. Um, his dwelling place and his dwelling place in Zion. So you see, there's a great code here, friends. Uh, it's, it really is quite mysterious. I'm not saying I know what it is, because see, I still I've been looking up Zion, and Zion, at its most strict interpretation, as I studied it, appears to be the city, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Zion, same thing, but it's not, because you'll see that they are they are referred to in different instances especially if you if you take that Salem is is Jerusalem here so you see in Salem is his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion so this might be saying his his place of uh, where he conduct his church you might say he, you know his um, the place where he does his his business as the as the priest because it says uh, uh, I will not repent. Uh, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So we know that the Lord Jesus is what? A priest. He's going to be a priest. And uh, so it says here, in Salem, Jerusalem is his tabernacle, and his dwelling place where he lives is in Zion. But Zion also means the city. So we have to distinguish what is Jerusalem, what is Zion. Just so we have to distinguish what is, what is Judah and what is Israel? Now I'm get, going to get to the uh, one of the main points that I wanted to get to with this was that there's another um, two two names, the Jacob and and Israel, and what is the difference? Because we know that what Jacob was uh, turned into Israel, his name was turned to Israel when he defeated the angel of the Lord or the the Holy Spirit uh, in in the in the in the body of a of a man, or or it seemed like an angel. That was before him because he's because in the in the where, where he wrestles the angel until morning, he eventually reveals that he is the Lord, and uh, I, I I don't think it was the Father or the Son. I think that was the Holy Spirit, but I could be wrong because he the way the way he says it, but maybe maybe it was Jesus. I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, At thy rebuke, O God of Jacob, both the chariot and the horse are cast into a deep sleep. Thou even thou art to be feared. And who may stand in thy sight when once thou art angry? Um, okay, it says here in Psalm 81, Sing aloud unto God our strength, and make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob. And then uh, further, further on, it says, For this was a statute for Israel, and a law of the God of Jacob. Okay, now this is, there's two things here. Why do you have... Israel, and then you have Jacob. Why is that? He ordained in Joseph a testimony when he went through the land of Egypt, where I heard a language that I understood not. And then 
here, it says, Hear, O my people, and I will test, uh, testify unto thee. O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me. Okay, so you see here, see he says, um, uh, this is where I, where I was finding it, is that the, the, um, there's two things, but you see, you, you'd think that um, Israel would be his people, but then he's, then, then he's calling Israel something else. You see, it says, Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee. Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me. So you can see Israel is, is called something besides his people. So what, what is God saying to us that Israel is not his people or, or not, not called his people in the first part of it? You see that? You see what I'm saying? It's, um, I know it's kind of confusing. I'm not sure what to make of it. I think it's like um, I, was, uh, I was telling somebody, and, and by the way, I still haven't found the exact uh, scripture where I was uh, reading th those two things. I mean, those, those, two, those two items and those, and those, those differences of, um, of uh, Israel and Jacob are, are throughout the scripture, but there was one in particular where you could really see it clearly. For this was a statute for Israel and a law of the God of Jacob. See, so it's, and, and then you see here, all my people, and you think Israel must be his people, but then he goes on to say, O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me. See, I don't think it's that he's, he's reconfirming what he just said. He's not, he's, he's not repeating what he just said. Instead, it's said in a different way. It's he's calling his people, which I think are, the, are Judah. Because what do we know? The, 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 the Jews appear to be um, divided into those two main, main parts, Israel and Judah. Or... Um, uh, or I should say, actually, Israel and um, and uh, well, Israel, uh, yeah, Judah and and uh, Israel. But Israel is is almost synonymous with uh, Jerusalem. And uh, I was wondering if, by chance, it's really that. Um, and, and you know, this is kind of a simple way to put it. Maybe I, you know, this is just an idea, and I don't want uh, to. Uh, put across a wrong idea in case uh, I don't have this right at all but it's just a guess that is is worth it because I think and by the way friends I have looked everywhere uh, books preachers and I haven't heard anybody who understands what these names are you could say they, they claim that they understand and then when you ask for their explanation about how it hooks up with the scripture and how it really means it makes no sense because it doesn't make sense they don't they don't understand they have wrong knowledge they're just like connecting things that don't really even connect so uh, people still don't know what the what the true meaning of the difference between Israel and Jacob is or what uh, Judah and Israel or Judah and Jerusalem uh, what what those true meanings are but this this is the idea that I had for that is that it's the male and the female and Judah is the male and and Jerusalem or Israel is the female but then that's then that doesn't make sense to me because um, God as the angel of God says to Jacob when he defeats him in a in a fight in a fist fight with him that he fought with him all night wrestled with him and uh, and he says that but now that you've defeated me your name shall be called Israel so you would think that that's stronger and the male is stronger so then that would mean um, that would mean it's um, it is uh, the opposite of what I'm saying is that is that actually that would make that would make the turning of his name from Jacob into Israel, uh, the, the, that would be uh, changing from, from the weaker male to the male stronger, uh, or uh, the, the weaker female to the male stronger is what I meant to say. So um, it's kind of, you know, I, I don't know what to make of that. I mean, if you, anybody has any good ideas, I'm telling you, this is, this is not, um, you know, stuff, see, it's not a matter of brain power, I think. I mean, it is some, but God will reveal it to whom he will reveal it. And what does God's word say about whom he reveals it to? To whom shall he teach knowledge? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts, Isaiah 28 tells us. Okay? And that means that they have what? Drunk of the milk of Jerusalem. And who is Jerusalem? The Holy Ghost. Okay? The Holy Spirit. And what is, and what is drinking the milk of Jerusalem? That means, uh, I believe that that is the Proverbs 123, turn you at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you, I will make known my words unto you, no one but God can say my words, the scripture are my words, only God can say that, whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine, those that 
Proverbs 123, turn at the reproof of the Holy Spirit. When you get punished, when, when that thing goes wrong, when there's the pain, when there's the loss, and then you realize it was about your sin because you were aware of that scripture, and you ask God, and you thought, oh yeah, that's my sin of, uh, of uh, smoking or, or something, you know, whatever it is. And, uh, and so you stop doing it, you stop that behavior based on the, on the reproof that you got, the pain, the punishment, and then the hope is, and don't think it's going to happen right away, but eventually I, th I believe it will happen because God's word is 100% true. You will have the Holy Spirit who corrected you in that lesson open the scripture, open your mind to what it really means. And uh, if you talk to a pastor or a preacher and they do not uh, understand that, they do not, they, if, if you tell them, hey, hey, what uh, pain has come into your life that you knew was a rebuke from the Holy Spirit? Because the, the Spirit says that the, He repro uh, reproves everyone, right? She, wisdom, reproves everyone. And turn you at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my Spirit unto you. And if you ask them that, and they don't know what that means, they do, like they're unfamiliar with that, uh, that whole saying, then, um, yeah, I uh, would, would uh, take that as the, uh, the leaven of the Pharisees. Because uh, a, a true man of God should know that by now or they should they you know they by their i would say you know at least 30 years old or you know 30 or 40 whatever i mean they should they should understand that but i mean you who are who are hearing this from me you should know it by now if you've been listening to my channel for a while that that's that's the first major step as a christian that you're going to get towards having the right knowledge poured into your mind from god because it's not a matter of brain power bill gates can't be the only one who saved albert einstein can't be the only one who saved right and they're not they weren't even saved they weren't even christians right so, but I mean, I'm talking about brain power here. If it took, it took brains, then only like a few elite smart people could, could figure out the scripture because it's, it's a massive code. Now, uh, some people think that they have and they connect up all these things that don't make sense. And that is the second line upon line false knowledge in Isaiah 28. Look at Isaiah 28 because there's two line upon lines. The first line upon line is the correct one because you what? Proverbs 123, you turned at the reproof of wisdom, you stopped doing the sin, and you're, if you're not on that path, like if you, you know, if you're, oh, well, I'm already so righteous and holy through the Holy Spirit that I don't do anything wrong, See, that, that's total ignorance. Uh, the, the man that's saved, the man that's going to make it into heaven, is being punished for his sins one after the other right now. Yeah, that's what Richard Bruce says. And if they don't know that, and if they're not saying that, Richard Bruce says, you ain't going to the same place he's going, okay? Uh, you know, wrong or right, okay? Because actually it's, it's either or. You know, that, that's, that's one thing you definitely get from the scripture. If you, if you are not so bad, you know, that you don't, you know, you think that, well, okay, the people that aren't so bad, well, they'll go to the place that, well, they, they didn't quite make it into heaven, but they, they don't well, don't deserve to go to hell either. Where there's the flame that's never quenched, and the word would never die. I mean, that's too harsh. They just go to like the uh, oh the uh, the fifth dimension of love and light for another recycling of uh, something or other as an alien. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, if you're here in the earth, and at least if you're human, I don't know about beast, but I believe that the scripture applies to them as well. That when you die, or at some point judgment will come and when your judgment comes you're going to heaven and you're a friend of God because you know Jesus through his words or you're going to hell because you didn't and you got the and especially if you were a Christian and you uh, did not turn Proverbs 123 turn you my reproof behold she wisdom a woman a girl female the Holy Spirit pours out her spirit unto you so that her words are known unto you and you find her proverbs 8 tells us proverbs 8 35 those who find me find life and shall obtain favor of the lord so you know it is you know the identity of the holy spirit okay that's who's making it friends okay so once again the question is why do you have two uh why do you have god saying my people and then he says Israel as though it's not his people, okay? And, oh, that my people, see, this is uh, Psalm 81 still. Oh, that my people, my people, had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways, as though Israel is not his people. Why is this seem to, seeming to indicate that Israel is not his people. Could it be that the you know if 
if that if that idea has any merit, I mean, and, and once again, maybe I'm I'm wrong about that, but maybe it's the, his people is the men. And then when he says Israel, he's talking about the women. Why would uh, you know that would be that would be the simplest explanation for why Jerusalem and or, or why uh, the people of God, the Jews, are apparently divided into these two main categories, because that's the biggest category, the male and the female. Also, just another interesting tidbit, the, um, here, still in, in Psalm, uh, no, actually this is 82, 82, uh, 6, I have said, ye are gods. So, uh, humans, or at least the Jews, are called gods. Um, and uh, I think Jews are called men, and the rest are called are, are uh, well. They're, they're not. They're, I don't know if they can. Yeah, no, because God calls uh, even beasts men. He says they are men. So uh, that means, of course, that probably all humans are are considered men. But He says, "I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High." And uh, but because uh, the Jews had sinned, then uh, they shall all die like men and fall like one of the princes, probably princes of the earth, he means. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou art, shall inherit all nations. This is talking about how he, he Jesus, uh, shall rule all nations. But guess who uh, uh, sits on the throne before him? Anybody can remember, remember who sits on the, on the throne before him? That's right, Jerusalem, the queen. Notice it says, this is uh, Psalm 94, 7. Yet they say, the Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. Now notice, if, if this is saying that this two different things, the Lord and then the God of Jacob, because I don't think it's repeating what it's saying, it's, it's, it's two different things. The Lord shall not see, the God of Jacob So, the Lord and the God of Jacob, what are those two things? And again, here in Psalm 94, 16, we have two things, evildoers and workers of iniquity, which this it would seem to be the same thing, but it, again, it's something different. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity. See, workers of iniquity would seem to be the same thing as evildoers. But why isn't it? That's the question. What is it? Why, why are there two different things? Who can answer that question? Evildoers and workers of iniquity. See, uh, some, cause some would say this is just confirming what the first part says, but I think it's something different. This is telling us that it's something different, whereas I thought that evildoers are workers, are workers of iniquity. But why do we have here, who will rise up for me against evildoers, or who will stand up for me against them? See, there's no reason to say it twice. God doesn't need to repeat this twice so that you know what it is. Or maybe this is speaking to two different people. Jesus, Maybe Jesus in Jerusalem, possibly. <clears throat> or uh, uh, mercy and truth, as, uh, as I have uh, imagined, I don't know, but I've, uh, but I've thought that that might be what um, Jesus and Jerusalem are. Um, Jesus being mercy and Jerusalem being truth who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity, evildoers. Okay, so notice Psalm 98, uh, no, 96, 13. It says, Before the Lord, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and he shall judge the world with righteousness. So we have the two things again. Earth, and world. And again, it looks like two different things. What is it saying? It says, For he come to judge the earth, he shall judge the world with righteousness. 